Welcome to a new video in the Drehmoment channel. I'm gonna ignore this DC fast charging station today because I'm driving a Hyundai Nexo. It's a fuel cell car. I don't need to transfer the energy from the charging station to the car. My energy is produced while I'm driving right under my bonnet in the fuel cell. Two gases come together, boom, electricity, magic. How does that work? I'm going to show you in this video, take you on a trip over the Autobahn in northern Germany. Let's go! Okay now, welcome to the Autobahn with this SUV from South Korea. It has a range up to 413 miles. That's more than with a comparable sized battery electric car. Their range would be around 200 to 300 miles. Also, refueling is much faster than charging. It takes only 5 minutes to fuel the max of 6.3 kg hydrogen. And that's another difference to a combustion engine. You, hydrogen is sold by kilogram, not liters. The Nexo needs 0.5 kilogram per 62 miles. So roughly one kilo, that makes it easier to calculate the cost. One kilo of hydrogen costs right now 9 euro 50 or 8 pound 30. So I can imagine the commentaries underneath the video saying, well, my combustion engine is much cheaper. Yes, it is, but, but hydrogen is made from water. So you don't need any deep boreholes in exotic countries, no long transports. If hydrogen is produced in large quantities locally, the price would drop dramatically. Let's have a look at the hydrogen filling stations. The H2Life app and website show four filling stations in the metropolitan area of Hamburg. But one of them had been red flagged for days now. The pump has a technical defect and the corona crisis makes it impossible to bring spare parts from abroad. At the time of shooting there are 83 hydrogen fueling stations in whole of Germany. That should grow to 100 in over the course of the year. In the UK the map shows just 11 stations. It's not many. The same is true for the owners of fuel cell cars. There's an EXO from Hyundai came 2018 to the market and its predecessor the iX35 fuel cell from Hyundai and there's also the Mirai from Toyota. Here you see the new version that I saw at the Tokyo Motor Show in 2019 and that's basically it. No other fuel cell cars on the German market. Mercedes-Benz never really sold its GLC fuel cell SUV and now they abandoned the project. All employees, patents and knowledge goes into a joint venture with Swedish Volvo. They want to develop fuel cell cars for the commercial vehicle market for trucks and semis. And Germany's largest car manufacturer Volkswagen has, was never keen on this technology. Volkswagen CEO Herbert Dies fully relies on better electric cars. The development board of BMW just recently endorsed the technology. But with the so-called iHydrogen project, you only see one X5 during trade shows like here on the, uh, at the IAA in Frankfurt. In summer of 2020, there's a change coming. The head of development changes and they get a new head of development and it remains unclear if he will continue the hydrogen project. After the corona pandemic, a number of projects in car companies will be terminated because they have to save cost. So driving in a hydrogen car is something special. It's a very unique car. You and I won't be happy to hear that, but it's true. I uh, looked up the numbers of the BAFA. The BAFA is a German authority for paying out uh, the state subsidy for electric cars. You can get this in Germany since mid 2016. And so far we have roughly 200,000 applications for the subsidy. And now guess how many are for fuel cell cars? 118. Not 118,000, just 118. 118. 
In the papers, I found 99 uh, applications for the Nexo and 19 for the iX35 fuel cell. It's basically nothing. It is amazing because it is a good car. It drives like a regular electric car. It has a normal drive mode and an echo drive mode. The sports mode is missing because the Nexo isn't really sporty. It takes 9.5 seconds to go from 0 to 62 miles. Top speed is 111 miles. At the front axle is an electric motor with 120 kilowatts and 395 newton meter of torque. Since the fuel cell can only generate a limited amount of energy, the car is supported by a lithium iron battery. It helps to accelerate the car. With 1.56 kilowatt hours, it's a fairly small battery, but you don't want to lose the, the weight advantage of the fuel cell car. The Nexo weighs just below two tons. The SOE measures 4.67 meters, 2.11 meters wide with the mirrors, and 1.64 meters high. It's a typical SUV car. If you're sitting in the driver's seat, the first look goes to the center console. It's massive. Hyundai calls it a bridge. It's built like a bridge over a storage compartment. But I feel like being on a bridge of the Spaceship Enterprise. I feel a bit like Sulu at his control panel. I have 40 buttons and rotary knobs here under my finger and the absolute opposite of what for example Tesla is doing with its cars. They are very reduced and everything is controlled by a touch display. No sub menus here. I can change the temperature right away, activate the media playback from my smartphone, uh, change to the navigation map and see it here on the 12.3 on the inch large screen right in front of me. This whole bridge might seem a bit like out of time, but the Nexo is absolutely contemporary. It supports Blue Link, that's a data connection from Hyundai. You just install the app, uh, open a, an account, type in the vehicle number, then you check a code here on the display, type it in, and the connection is established right away, no problem at all. And you, then you can remotely open the car with the app, you can preheat or cool it, you can check remaining, ra uh, remaining range, you can find the car where you parked last, you can make your route plans at the kitchen table in the morning and send the road to the car. Very easy. I have to come back to the bridge once more because it offers lots of storage space and it includes inductive charging for the smartphone. All devices that support the key standard will be charged down there as soon as the orange light is on. There's a total of three USB connectors and two other power outlets. So for mobile nerds carrying lots of mobile devices, you are covered. I'm sitting in a version here with a premium package which costs an extra 3,500 euros and it includes, for example, the sunroof, a heated steering wheel, uh, heated seats, two in the front, two in the back, and you can ventilate the front seat with cool air in the summer. Now my highlight in the premium package is the blind spot detection. As soon as I, as I activate the turn signal, a camera activates underneath the respective wing mirror shows me my blind spot. Right in front of me, on my display, I see the camera image. It gives me an extremely good feeling when I take turns in cities. I see if a bicyclist or a pedestrian is coming. Same on the Autobahn. I can see if someone is in my blind spot. I've not seen a comparable system in any other car yet. There are also a number of assistants in here, like adaptive cruise control, active lane keeping assistant, an attention assistant, uh, traffic sign recognition, how far how fast can I go, a reverse traffic warning, when I go reverse from a parking spot, they detect someone coming from the left or right, you can't see yet. And speaking of parking, you will love this assistant here.
in a narrow parking spot, you can pull out the car with a key fob without sitting in the car. And the next one is a family car. Safety, driving comfort, space, comfort, all aspects that are important for families buying a car. And when it comes to sustainability, the next one is right on. Sugarcane fiber is possessed in the carpets. Corn is used as a base material for the door linings, the seats and the roof panel linings. Paint in the interior uses rapeseed and soy oil as a basis. Let's have a look in the trunk. It looks spacious. Un unfortunately, under this cover, there is no more storage space. It holds 461 liters. If you need more space, you can fold down the back seats. Then you get 1,466 liters of storage space. At the front, there's an LED light strip. It goes across the, the whole width and it gives the car a friendly look, almost a smile. Below a large opening for the air intakes. And the Nexo draws the oxygen for the energy production from the ambient air. If you open the bonnet, you see the fuel cell. There is no further storage space. I can't show you the hydrogen tank, but I use footage from the 2018 Geneva Motor Show. The three cylindric tanks are installed in front and behind the rear axle. The plastic cover is 4.5 centimeters thick. It has, it has to survive crashes undamaged and also to keep the volatile pressurized gas within the tank. When refueling hydrogen, it's pumped with a pressure of 700 bar into the tanks. Quite a lot, I guess, but I have no feeling for it. I can feel pressure in my body when I dive, so I checked on the diving website. At a depth of 100 meters, you have 10 bar of pressure. That means you have to go over 7,000 meters below sea level to get 700 bar. I know it's impossible, but it gives you an idea of the forces. That brings us to the question, what happens with the hydrogen in the car? Where does the electric energy come from? We have to take a look at how hydrogen is produced. Since I can't go to a chemical plant during the corona pandemic with my camera, so I set up my chemistry kit in the studio. Both tubes are filled with plain water and the blue box is a small fuel cell. If I connect a battery, the so-called electrolyzer starts. Basically, the electric energy separates the elements of water, H2O. In the left tube, you see oxygen that pushes up the water level. In the right tube, hydrogen is produced underneath the plastic housing and it also pushes up the water level. Now I can connect a fan instead of a battery and when hydrogen and oxygen come together in the fuel cell electric energy is released. It's a re reverse reaction and that's, this is exactly what happens in the car. Air is taken from the outside, cleaned by filters and it meets oxygen in the stacks of the fuel cell and a charged electron charge brings the energy to the motor and H and O combine to H2O in the form of steam which drips out of an outlet in the back of the car and as a byproduct you have heat and the heat is used to heat up the cabin. It's an advantage to the battery electric cars because they use energy from the battery to heat the interior. In this process not all outside air is used, but it's cleaned, so the Nexo improves air quality while you drive. This display shows how much air you have purified. But since there are so few fuel cell cars, you won't smell or feel a difference in the cities. Once you think it's a perfect system, why don't we all drive hydrogen cars since years? Well, there are some drawbacks. 
Let's start with the manufacturing of hydrogen. There's only CO2-free mobility if the hydrogen is produced with green energy, so from renewable sources. So far that does not exist on an industrial scale, at least in Germany. Hydrogen is mostly produced with conventional gas. A bigger drawback is the energy efficiency. Let's take a look at this uh, well-to-wheel graphic. It shows the energy consumption from producing it well to using it in the car. Let's start with a battery electric car. If a wind turbine produces 100 kilowatts and you transport it to the charging station, then around 80 kilowatts arrive at the charging station. The rest is lost due to resistance in the power lines and transforming AC to DC and vice versa. Then you have some charging losses, so around 76 kilowatts make it to the battery and you can use it. Now let's have a look at hydrogen. 100 kilowatt again. Part of the energy is used for the electrolysis to produce the hydrogen. Then the hydrogen has to be either compressed or liquefied, which happens at minus 253 Celsius for the storage or the transport. Hydrogen is then transported to the filling station and all steps cost energy. Overall, 30% or 30 kilowatt land in the car and can be used. 70% of the energy is used somewhere else on the way. And this can't be changed. These are laws of physics. And that's probably the reason why the European car makers are not very keen on this technology, at least not for passenger cars. The fuel might have a chance in trucks and semis in the future. The, the weight advantage of the fuel cell is unbeatable. The situation is totally different in Asia, especially in South Korea and Japan. Hyundai has banned a second fuel cell plant in Chengdu in uh, South Korea. They are running 3,000 units from uh, the conveyor belts per year and by 2022 it should be 40,000 units per year. And the manufacturer already announced in 2018 its fuel cell electric vehicle vision for the brands of Hyundai and Kia. By 2030, they wanted to produce 700,000 fuel cell cars per year. They invest 6 billion euros in research and development and create around 51,000 jobs in this area. So they take it fairly serious. In Fukushima, Japan, the Equalizer started a test operation in March 2020. It's one of the largest electrolyzer plants using green energy in the world. The 10 megawatt single stack can produce up to 1,200 cubic meters of hydrogen per hour. And energy produced from fuel cells is not only for cars, it can be used for residential homes as well. Toyota has presented the Woven City, an uh, urban space of tomorrow at the CES in January of 2020. And the fuel cell plays an important part of to store and provide energy for the houses. In this Hyundai video, you can see that also railways and ships, drones and cities also be supplied with energy by fuel cells. For this year's Earth Day, Hyundai produced a video uh, that deals with environmental issues, sustainability and the Lexo. And few of you might recognize these young men. They are the members of the band BTS. They are the most famous K-pop band in the world. It's like having Adele, Ed Sheeran, Louis Capaldi in one video, just for their popularity. It is quite a big number. Well, that leads me to my conclusion. The Hyundai Nexo is a perfect family car with plenty of comfort, space and many security elements. What I missed is the head-up display, which the Hyundai Kona has in its premium package. And even if the battery is quite small, I like that I can change recuperation with these paddles at the wheel. The sound system comes from the US company Krell, like in the Kona. I'm not a big fan 
my music sounds a bit too dull to me and even the equalizer can't change it. If I look at the consumption for my 1,500 test kilometers, I used 1.1 kilogram of hydrogen for 100, per 100 kilometers, a bit more than Hyundai estimated, but I was mostly driving on the autobahn. With a price tag of 69,000 pounds, the Nexo is not a bargain car. But if I got you excited now to get one, I have to disappoint you. At least on the German website, the configurator is offline. You can't order them online. But you can go to the dealerships in Germany and get the car there. Well, I will enjoy my last miles in this unique piece of modern electric mobility. Thank you for watching. I'm happy for every new subscriber and about every constructive comment. Till the next car, see you then, bye bye.